Yeah, we back. Now today, man, we're gonna pay homage to an ancestor. I've been meaning to do this video for a while, so not wasting no time. Let's get into it. We're gonna talk about General Louis Lamartinier and his wife, Marie Jeanne Lamartinier. I know we always talk about Dessaline, we always talk about Toussaint, we always talk about Christophe, but trust me, it was it was way more than that, bro. It was way more than that. So not wasting no time, let's get into it. General Louis Lamartinier was born in the year 1771 in the town of Leogan, and he died in 1802 at the age of 31. He was a military officer during the Haitian Revolution and a senior officer of the Napoleonic Army. He commanded the Haitian armed resistance during the Battle of Crete Apiewo in March 1802 under the leadership of Dessalines, one of the most legendary battles that black men ever fought in the history of humanity. Now, let's get into it, man. French General Panfil de la Croix said Lamartinière was a quadroon mulatto with the heart of a black man. Lamartinière was a quadroon. He was the illegitimate son of a white Frenchman and a mixed race woman. His father owned a sugar plantation and a refinery in the town of Leogan. His father had recognized his mulatto son, but only left an inheritance to his legitimate white son. Lamartinière enlisted as a soldier in the French army, commanded by André Rigaud, and from the age of 22 to 27, he fought alongside André Rigaud during the days of the British invasion. After the British were defeated, Lamartinière took the opportunity to hunt down and kill his half-brother and took possession of the family's land. In 1802, Lamartinière became famous for his involvement in the Battle of Crete Apiewo. In 1802, Brigadier General Lamartinière commanded the Fort of Crete Apiewo. His wife, Marie-Jean Lamartinière, served under his command. Dessalines took command of the fort in March of 1802, aided by talented officers like Magny, Lamartinière, Maupoint, and La Rose. Dessalines strengthened the fort into a makeshift citadel with a garrison of 1,000 men. On the 4th of March, 1802, the French military arrived at Crete Apiewo, commanded by General de Bell. Despite being heavily outnumbered with only 1,000 troops in comparison with the French who had over 15,000 men, La Martinière's men threw themselves into the trenches and bombarded the French with their artillery and sent the French on the run. 400 Frenchmen were immediately killed or wounded, including General de Bell. Then, on March 12th, a new assault led by French Captain General Leclerc on the fort also failed and another 480 Frenchmen were killed or wounded. French General Leclerc had been hit in the crotch and French General Dugois was murdered by two bullets. French General Boudet had been injured in the heel. On the 22nd of March, the French made another attempt, this time led by General Rochambeau, which failed again and cost the French another 300 men. And by the way, for any of y'all who may be new to my channel, go to my playlist section. I have a playlist entitled, The Memoirs of Jean-Jacques Dessalines' Secretary. If you want a direct written account of the Haitian Revolution from somebody who was on the battlefield during the Haitian Revolution, Dessalines' right-hand man wrote everything down from his point of view. Go to my playlist section, The Memoirs of Jean-Jacques Dessalines' Secretary. Check that out. I go in great detail about the Battle of Crete Apiewo. Extreme detail, bro. Extreme. Go, go check that out after this one. Now, let's get back into it. Later that year, in November 1802, Lamartinier and his soldiers fell into an ambush where he was killed and his head was placed on top of a pike. Rest in peace, General Lamartinier. One love to the ancestor. Now, let's talk about his wife, my Jean Lamartinier. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, real shooter, real top shot, a real gangster. You know what I'm saying? Big up, big up, to, big up to Big Mama Lamartinier. You know what I mean? Let's talk about it. Marie-Jeanne Lamartinière, known in history only as Marie-Jeanne, was a female Haitian soldier and the wife of Brigadier General Lamartinière. She served in the Haitian army and was most famous for her role in the Battle of Crete Apiou. She fought in a male uniform, standing on top of the walls of the fort, armed with both a rifle and a sword. She made a great impression with her fearlessness and courage and was said to use the long rifle to murder the wounded French soldiers with a skill that all the men applauded. When she was not fighting, Marie-Jeanne nursed her injured comrades. When describing the allocation of her scarce water supply for the thirsty and dying troops, one historian states, Marie-Jeanne gave water with a silver serving spoon that hung from her sash on a fine chain. From the bottle she carried as she filled the spoon just short of the brim and slipped between the jaws of the patient, a doctor noticed the short knife which rode in her sash between the spoon chain and her sword. Two days before, she had cut the throat of a man so maddened by thirst he tried to snatch the water bottle from her. She had done it as neatly as a farmer letting blood from a pig or snapping the head of a chicken. It was considered to be a mercy killing because the other soldiers of the garrison would surely have torn the offender limb from limb. After the death of her husband in battle, it was said that she was intimately involved with Dessaline for a short time before marrying another officer in the military. Yeah, man, you already know. Certain women, they only gonna deal with the bosses, man. Certain women, listen, bosses only. <laughs> bosses only, man, bosses only. But yeah, man, after the, after the revolution, it's not much information on what happened to... Uh, my Jean Lamartinière, we don't really have much information, unfortunately. I wish I knew what happened. After 1803, she kind of she falls off the map. I don't really know what happened. I wish I knew. If anybody knows, man, if anybody got some, some information, hit my email about it because I really would love to know. I've been studying Haitian history for 
10, 15 years, but I'm still learning new things constantly. So if any of y'all know what happened to Maya Jean Lamassigne after 1803, I would love to know. But anyways, man, it's your boy Nefakari Dessaline back in the billet. Yes, indeed. Like, share, subscribe, cash app in the description. And I'm gone. Peace. Reincarnated, I'm back in the original fashion. I left on a horse and came back in that ass. And I left with abundance and came back to famine. We used to be pyramids, now we be rapping. Look how the mighty have fallen. Used to be running, now we be walking. When you be cooning, that's when they applauded. Selling your soul, your sons and your daughter. Gotta come up in this shit. They stuck in the mix. Really, my heart to be breaking. That's why I'm stacking that paper and handle my business. Pass it down in generation. Talking about money and power and building a nation. That's a deadly combination. Never be watching the TV, they pushing the genus. Falsifying information. No, they got malice intentions. Step in the room and I'm feeling attention. Enemy watching, he blocking my vision. Get for the check, cause I need my redemption. Building my kingdom, I need to protect it. Ready for war like a young money Congo. Never decided the team is the motto. Up in the crib and I'm whipping up waffles. Up in the crib and I'm smoking gelato. I'm chilling, I'm taking my pain and making ambition. I'm blessed by the guys, but I ain't religious. I came for the power, they came for the bitch. They making no hour, they wage. I got business. This shit is an art. And they can never be taught. Selling my soul, I can never be bought. Play with my money, I see you in court. Run to the check and I do it for sport. Babylon falling, I go to the source. Packing my luggage and go overseas. Shorty be with me and she so elite. Shorty be chugged and I'm calling her Hershey. Secret intelligence probably gonna murder me. Don't fuck with brands, cause nigga, I'm Haitian. Say the wrong shit and you're smacking their faces.